In this video, we're going to distinguish between addition and condensation polymers in terms of their structure, and then look how condensation polymers are formed from their monomers. So first, let's just take a look at addition polymers again. That's part of the core. You're taking basically monomers that have a carbon-carbon double bond and reacting them together um, where the double bond is lost and used to help link up the different monomers, and you end up then with a saturated product. So when this happens, you really have no atoms removed and there's no real um, rearrangement in terms of structure of functional groups. Let's contrast that with the condensation polymer. So here's an example. We have a dicarboxylic acid and a diamine as our reactants. So we can see now that our monomers are actually a little bit different. The difference is that these are bifunctional monomers. So that means they have two active sites, or in other words, two functional groups. So our diols, dicarboxylic acids, and diamines, they can react together to form these condensation polymers because of this. So what would happen here, and this is sort of the general idea, is that um, you have the OH will go with the H, and that will end up forming water. And so that's sort of where the condensation idea comes from, but it doesn't necessarily always have to be water and in some cases it doesn't necessarily have to make a separate product. But commonly, this is what it is, and most examples will be of this. So after that, the carbon will link directly to the nitrogen, and now you have a polymer. So this polymer, if you look at the product, um, it's going to either be saturated or unsaturated. It will depend on what you started with, and our water is removed, which is different from here, although not all examples will have that. So now let's take a look at a couple of specific examples that are in the syllabus. So in the first one, phenol methanol plastics, a phenol is basically a benzene ring with a hydroxyl group, so it's an alcohol. And then we have our methanol, which is an aldehyde. So we're going to take both of those, and what will happen is they'll react together, and they'll actually form uh, two products. So one of these methanols will end up reacting and becoming attached at the second carbon. We number from this carbon here. And then the other one will go to position the fourth position. This will come, become important later when we look at this in a more detailed example. But for now, we're just going to look at how we can use one of these to form a um, condensation polymer. So we take one of these, and we can react it with another phenol. And through that process, again, the OH can go with the H, and then that would form water. And then you're ending up with carbon um, combining directly with the other carbon. So our second example here is going to be polyurethane, which is essentially the foam packaging. Not styrofoam, but the other type of foam. And what happens here is we take, uh, again, um, are bifunctional monomers and in this case we have a new functional group that you've never looked at before and you don't have to know but uh, this is isocyanate and what will happen here is something a little bit different so this is a different type of condensation polymer and not everybody agrees to call it a condensation polymer and you'll sort of see why in a second so what essentially happens here, and again, you don't have to draw this or any of these, but just want you to understand um, sort of the example. So what will happen here is um, the uh, oxygen will end up linking directly with this carbon here, okay? And the hydrogen that was attached to this oxygen is going to shift over to the nitrogen over to here and that double bond is going to be um, removed as a result. So there's no actual removal of atoms, they just shift over, um, but this actually changes the functional group, and so according to the IB, um, we're going to consider that a condensation polymer also because it is a bifunctional group that makes this. So that would be um, another example. Our third example is looking at PET, so if you look at any um, recycled bottle, a lot of them are PET. And what will happen in the case of PET is that we'll have another um, bifunctional group, so in this case uh, dicarboxylic acid, um, reacting with a diol, and a heat and catalyst, and then what we're going to end up with 
is again the OH uh, will be going with the hydrogen from the alcohol and forming water and then that oxygen will directly connect up with this carbon and so now we have um, our, our polymer and that can keep going on and on.